Genesis 25, verse 29, the Bible says, And Jacob saw pottage, and Esau came from the field, and he was faint. Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. And Jacob said, Sell me this day thy birthright. And Esau said, Behold, I am at the point to die, and what profit shall this birthright do to me? Jacob said, Swear to me this day. And he swore unto him, and he sold his birthright unto Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils, and he did eat and drink and rose up and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for these guys being here, Lord. It's a blessing to have each one here. Lord, we need your touch and your power right now in this class. Lord, God, you can change lives. God, you can transform people from the inside out. And we pray that you would do that, Lord. God, there's nothing special about me or my preaching, Lord, but your word is powerful. And, Lord, it does change lives. And we pray your Holy Spirit would just prick our hearts right where we need it. God, that you would do the work that needs to be done and accomplish um, your will here in this class through each life, Lord. I pray that you give me the right words and thoughts and spirit, God, that you would be pleased, that you would be lifted up. And, God, that you would help us to hear your voice clearly, Lord, from um, your word, Lord, today. Pray that, God, you would please give us the help that we need, and, Lord, that you would make us more like you, Lord, that we would love you more as a result of it. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. In Jesus' name, amen. You guys can be seated. Thank you for standing. I appreciate that very much. Guys, we opened into this last week, but this is the story of two brothers. They're actually twins, but it seems like they didn't have too much in common as to how they actually lived their lives and how they conducted themselves. Their two names are Jacob and Esau. Esau's the older one just by a couple minutes. In fact, it says when uh, Esau came out first and then Jacob was right after him. And verse 26 indicates that he actually hooked on to his heel. And when they pulled Esau out, then Jacob was right after that. So pretty crazy with how that was. But how they were growing up, guys... Um, Esau was more of an outdoorsman. He was a hunter. The Bible tells us about that. Um, he loved to do things in the outdoors, and he was kind of a, a rugged type guy, rugged type man. Jacob was not. He was just kind of chilling on the inside, inside the house, and doing things around the house type of person, and all that. And we talked about the hair and all that. I'm not going to get into that today. All right, but. You know the story, I think, most of you about that. But the story at hand, guys, that we're dealing with starts in verse 29. And it kind of starts out real innocently, real simply. Jacob, it says, sod pottage. What that means is he's making a stew. He's making some kind of soup. And he's cooking there. And Esau comes from the field. So he had been outdoors. He's been working. Uh, maybe he's been hunting. Maybe he's been fixing up something around the the ranch or whatnot, but he comes inside, guys. He's tired. He's worn out, right? And he says, man, uh, Jacob, what you're cooking smells pretty good. Could I have some of that? The story gets really serious at this point, though, because he comes in, he's hungry, and he wants some of the food. He asked his brother for it, but in verse number 31, Jacob says, sure. You saw you're hungry? Yeah. You want some of my, some of my soup? Sure, man. Here's the price of it. Verse number 31. He said, sell me this day thy birthright. <laughs> you want some of my cooking? Sure, man. Absolutely. But the price of it is your birthright. You say, what is that? A birthright was really important in that day and age, guys, in that culture, because um, the firstborn of a firstborn son of a family would get this just by his position in the family. And what it entailed was some really, really important things that I'll explain to you in just a moment. But he's saying, basically, uh, brother, if you want some of this food that I'm cooking, man, um, you give me that right. You give me that privilege that you had and that I've always wanted. You give it to me. And sure, I'll give you a bowl of soup. No problem. Um, Esau does something very foolish, guys. And by the way, sin is always foolish, guys. Every time we choose to go against God, it's foolish. The world may look make it look good, George. The devil may make it look appealing and something that... Pulls onto our flesh and hooks onto us, but sinful decisions are always foolish, guys, when you really think about it. And Esau says, Hey, man, this birthright ain't doing me any good right now. Sure, I'll sell it to you as long as you give me some of this food. And that's exactly what they do. Verse number 33, he sells it to him, makes that commitment, and it says Esau despised his birthright. Guys, what we're preaching about is this thought don't sell out. Don't sell out. In your Christian life, listen, God has given you some things spiritually. They're important. They're privileges. They are blessings that God has put into your life. I'll explain some of those as we go. But guys, don't sell out. 
Don't sell out. Every day you have these opportunities to sell out, to give up, to cave in, to compromise. Don't sell out. The first point was just the privileges of this status. We're talking about the birth right here. Here's what it entailed, guys. For a, for a firstborn son in that culture to have the birthright meant this. First of all, he would get a double inheritance. When his father would pass away, he would get double of what other the other siblings would get, his other brothers and sisters would get. He would get double of that. So double the money, double the property, and so forth and so on. Also, he would get a spiritual position in that, guys. He would be now the family leader. When the dad would pass on, he would be the family leader. And spiritually, guys, he would take the reins of control of that family. That's very important. In that day and age, if they were to sin, then they would have to do an animal sacrifice. That would be Esau's responsibility as the firstborn and as the one with the birthright. Guys, that was very important. And that would be something that should be taken very seriously. It makes me think of Job in the book of Job. It talks about that he would sacrifice unto, uh, unto God and he would do it. He said, maybe, maybe my sons have cursed God and sinned in their hearts. So you know what that means, guys? He would go to God on behalf of his children. Even it amazes me. He didn't even know if they had done anything wrong or not. But he says it may be, it may be. They have some sin in their heart. They've cursed God in their heart. And he would do that, West, to cleanse his family, to atone for the sins of his family by this animal sacrifice, which we know ultimately pictures Christ that would come, the perfect Lamb of God that would take away the sin of the world. But in that day and age, that was their responsibility. That was given to Esau. Okay? So he would get a double inheritance. He would get that family leadership and the priestly duties and guys. He would be in the line of the Messiah. It was supposed to go as follows. Abraham that started the Jewish race. Abraham, Isaac, his son. And then it was supposed to be Esau. But because of this story and because of his foolish decisions, it switches. So now if you've been in church in any length of time, you know the proper progression is Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This is why though. Guys, it's not just that the Jewish seed would carry on. But this Jewish seed would one day produce the Messiah, Jesus Christ. Esau would have been in that line. And that was the privileges that he enjoyed, guys. So those are some of the things that were given to him. Real quickly, let me run through these, guys. You say, well, Brother Tom, in this day and age, we don't have a birthright. Yeah, I get that. It's something that's passed off the scene. It's something that doesn't have any prominence anymore. But guys, can I say spiritually, listen, you're young guys. I'm not preaching to 45-year-olds today. I'm preaching to teenagers, right? Guys, some of the things that you have as a young person, a young, saved young man, Christian, you have your purity. Guys, that's a spiritual birthright. That's something that should be important to you. And by the way, I was thinking about this last night, Ethan. We're not just talking about uh, between you and a young lady. Can I tell you also, let me spin purity in this way too. Guys, I think most of you, you never tasted alcohol. You've never tried drugs. You've never got into smoking, these type of things. Can I tell you that purity is important too? That purity is important too. Keep a pure mind. Keep a pure life. And don't pollute your body with these things that will trash it. Listen, your purity is a spiritual birthright. Your potential, guys. God has great potential for each one of you. That's a spiritual birthright. Your heritage. You have grown up, many of you, at Woodlawn Baptist Church. Guys, that's a great spiritual heritage. That's a birthright. Listen, I'm not against any other Bible preaching church, one that preaches the gospel. But Tim, we didn't just... Grow up in some church that just started five years ago. You realize this, guys? We have had decades of dedicated service. Listen, I'm proud to have grown up at Woodlawn Baptist Church, George. I've heard about Chuck Webb. I, I know Brother Bob Ritchie. I know about uh, Brother Tripp. I know about Brother Jack Wyatt. My dad, uh, Pastor Fenwick, for 33 years pastored this church, and now we have a great pastor, Pastor Tyson. Listen. That's a great heritage that we have, guys. We've been running those buses, I think, either 48 or 49 years. Every week, we, we send those buses out. You like the same buses? I don't think so. All right, we've gotten a few over time. You're like, I can't tell. I know, I know. But we try, all right? But listen, but that's a great heritage, guys. That's no small thing when people say, yeah, I was knocking on doors, or I gave a track to somebody, and they say, oh, yeah, I used to ride that blue bus. Some people don't even know the name of our church. Woodlawn, Woodlawn, I'm not sure. What is the name? The Blue Bus. Oh, yeah. You know, that's how they know our church, by the blue. We should just be called the Blue Bus Baptist Church. People are like, oh, yeah, I know you guys. I see. I used to ride. And you're like, why don't you know the name of the church? You know, anyway, different story. That, that's a heritage, though, guys. That's a heritage. You should be proud of that. You should, you should be thankful that you've grown up into this. 
Ethan, we didn't have to invent Christianity. We didn't have to invent what being a godly man was all about. We didn't have to sit down and, and open our Bibles and say, man, what does it mean to be a godly man? Guys, it was demonstrated before us every single day, every single week. Hey, guys, that's a spiritual heritage. We need to appreciate that. Honoring God is your spiritual birthright faithfulness. Guys, that needs to be one of your goals in life. I want to be a faithful Christian. I want to be consistent. Listen, guys, I've seen a lot of guys that go way up and then they go way down. They're serving God and then they're quitting. You need to be consistent, consistent over time. Listen, it should be in five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years from now. You're still serving God and putting him first. Hey, guys, the truth, the truth is a spiritual birthright. Guys, it's important. The stuff that we teach you every week from this book, Joseph, it's important. We need to grab a hold of it. Listen, we know who Jesus is. We know what sin is all about. We know what heaven and hell are all about. We know what righteousness is. Guys, we know how we should live. We know how we should talk. We know how we should think and how we should behave. These are not mysteries to us. Most of the world doesn't know these things, but we know them. That's a spiritual birthright. We need to appreciate those things. And let me finish with this. There's more I could go into. But guys, your testimony. You know what? Each one of you has a testimony, whether this is your first week here or whether you've been coming for years, your whole life. You have a testimony. You know what it is? In, in, in other words, your reputation. What people think of you. Hey, guys, is your testimony something that's important to you? When people think of Tim, does that, does that reinforce in their mind, hey, living for God is worth it. He's, he's on top of things. He's after it. He's on the front line serving God. Hey, guys, that's the way it should be. When people think of you, what comes to mind? Those are spiritual birthrights that we have. Guys, you have... The privileges of that. But, you know, Esau's problem, point number two, the priority was on the sensual. Sensual means the what goes along with the senses. It was fleshly. He only cared about taking care of him. Anthony, he only cared about taking care of himself. And in verses 29 through 31, we know that story. I don't need to really dive into the verses, but guys... Jacob's cooking. He comes in. He's been working hard. There's nothing wrong with him being hungry. There's nothing wrong with him being tired. There's certainly nothing wrong with him working hard. Guys, we should be hard workers. But he comes in. He's got this appetite. He's hungry. He's He has this desire. And it just so happens that his little brother is cooking something there in the kitchen. And it smells pretty good to him. Guys, you know what only he cared about, though? Taking care of Esau, taking care of himself, his own desires. And guys, when he walked in the house that day, he didn't expect something to be something to be uh, cooking that would potentially take his birthright from him. But it was. He had this appetite and it was appealing to him. And guys, like I said, verse 31 is really important because... Jacob says, yeah, you can have some, but it's basically he's asking him this, guys. Get this. He says, what's it worth to you? What's it worth to you? You have this birthright. You have these privileges in your life, and I would love to have it. But, man, what's it worth to you? Hey, guys, the things that I just mentioned, your purity, your testimony, uh, you standing for God, your convictions, the heritage that you have growing up in this place, having a clean mind, having a, a clean life, guys. What's it worth to you? Because if you don't watch it, we all have these desires. And sometimes we walk into situations and the devil's stirring up something. And it says, we say, you know what? That smells good. That's appealing to me. And that's how the devil works it, guys. And he's saying, what's it worth to you? Hey, 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 guys, your purity, what's it worth to you? Your potential, what's it worth to you? Your future living for God, what's it worth to you? Hey, guys, I believe... For every single one of you, God has a perfect will. Is that important to you? Is that worth a lot to you? Hey, guys, one day God wants you to have a family and and to raise that family in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Is that important to you? Is that worth very much to you? The priority for him was on the sensual. Only what appealed to him. And guys, we know the story. He gave it up. He gave up his spiritual birthright for not a lifetime supply of Jacob's soup. All right, he didn't have he didn't have a truckload of, of cans that said Jacob's soup that he put in his pantry. One meal is what he gave up his spiritual birthright for. One, guys. After he ate this, we all know. A couple hours later, I'm sure he got hungry again. Right? 
Doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that out. He gave it up for one meal. You say, that's stupid. It was passing. It was brief. It was momentary, temporary. It was over very quickly. Hey, guys, I've seen some guys give up their potential, their calling, their convictions, things that God has placed in them for one relationship, for one job. If I can get more money and they sold out. Guys, the message today is don't sell out. Don't give these things up. The Bible says that we need to uh, let them. If any man follow Jesus, we need to uh, deny ourselves and take up our cross daily and follow him. We know, guys, that the pleasures of sin are only for a season. They last for a very short time and it's over. All right. Let's continue on in this message. The privileges of this status, the priority of the sensual point number three to him, to Esau. The pointlessness of the spiritual. The pointlessness of the spiritual. You say, that sounds weird for you to be saying that. Yeah, this is from Esau's perspective. This is what he believed. This is how he lived. This is how it manifested itself in his life. The pointlessness of the spiritual. Uh, Verse number 32. Could I have somebody read verse number 32 for me? So, get this, guys. Chris, I'll have you read it in just a second. Get this. This comes right on the heels of Jacob saying... Yeah, you want my suit? Fine, bro. Here, I got it all ready for you. But the price is, sell me this day that birthright. I I don't know. The Bible doesn't give us uh, insight on this. But Joseph, I would think that that would kind of take Esau back. Like, huh? Where'd that even come from? Right? Dude, where did that come from? I just want some food. I just want some lunch. Okay? Where did talking about my birthright even come from? But let's see his answer. He wasn't shocked. He wasn't appalled enough to answer back and rebuke his brother. Let's see what he says. Chris, verse number 32, please. And Esau said, Behold, I am at the point to die. And what profit shall this birthright do to me? Thank you, Chris. Good job. Guys, what is he saying there? He says, Behold, I am at the point to die. And what profit shall this birthright do to me? What do you guys think he's saying? Can you break it down for me a little bit? Chris? Uh... Like he's he's thinking that he's a better man because he's like um he's kind of like starving. Yeah. yeah. Mhm. And like um and uh he's thinking like um what what is this like birth birth baby gonna do for me? Mhm. Good. Like, when I'm dying. Good. Any other thoughts, guys? Anybody want to add to that before we move on? Yes, no, maybe so. All right. Guys, he thinks that what's spiritual, right? This birthright was mostly a spiritual blessing. We talk about the inheritance, but the other facets of it, the second and third ones, were very spiritual in nature. Being in the line of the Messiah and also getting the spiritual leadership of the family passed on to you. Guys, in verse number 32, he's saying, Behold, I am at the point to die. What? Prophet, shall this birthright do to me? Guys, this special blessing that had been given to him, you know what he's basically saying? What good is it doing me right now? And let me just go in order here. First of all, guys, he says, behold, I'm at the point to die. Now, guys, who's ever been so hungry? You're like, man, dude, I'm starving right now, right? Seriously, I'm not even making this up to sound, make my sermon sound good. I felt like that this morning, man. Whoo! It was like 630. I've been up for a little bit. And then my stomach's just like, you need something now. No! I'm like, okay, all right, calm down, you know? And I had to get something to tide me over till breakfast, man. Whew! Can we be honest, though? I was not about to die. And guys, Esau was not about to die. The first sub-point here is he severely exaggerated his condition. Guys, he had been working hard. Okay, that's valid. He was hungry. That's valid. He came in and wanted some food. I get that, Esau. I'm totally on board with you, man. But when he asked you for your birthright, which is so important, and you're over here like, dude, I'm about to die anyway. No, you're not. Hey, guys, he's over here exaggerating his condition. And can I tell you, spiritually, the devil will do the same thing with you. Hey, guys, sometimes, 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 if a young man, you're trying to live right, you're trying to do right, you're trying to be clean and pure, and maybe you've graduated and you're, you're going into adulthood and all this. Listen, listen, listen. And sometimes, guys, with how it works out with the Lord, sometimes that 
That right woman hasn't come along, come along yet. And you over here saying, Lord, do you see me out here on this island, Lord? Lord, I need this in my life. I want this in my life. God, it's like nothing's happening. And you get desperate. And guys, when people get desperate, usually they make very dumb decisions. You hear me? I think that's what Esau's doing. And we can do the same kind of thing. Well, nothing's come along yet, dude. I just better hurry up and do something before I'm 65 years old and alone and by myself and dying on my deathbed. You're not dying yet. Calm down. You know what we need to do, guys? Sometimes take a step back and be patient. Say, Lord, you're in control of the situation. If I go by my feelings right now, I'm going to make a bad decision. Hey, guys, there's a lot of times when people say things to you and the first reaction is to flare up and get mad at them. That's a fleshly response. You know what we need to do a lot of times? And I'm not saying any of us does this perfectly. Mentally, we need to take a step back and say, Lord, what do you, how do you want me to handle this situation? How do you want me to handle this situation? A couple of weeks ago, I had somebody say something to me. And I don't think they meant to, Anthony, but the way it came off was just like an insult to me, like straight up. And I'll be honest with you, I had just <laughs> I had just got done doing something. It went really well. Things were going well. And it caught me completely off guard when this person said, and I tell you, you ever feel it just kind of like raging up inside of you? And you're like, where'd that come from? Two seconds ago, you weren't even thinking of getting angry. Everything was great. Everything's wonderful. But then this person says it, and it's just like, like an avalanche coming up, and you're like, boy, I'm about to unleash on you, you know? Inside is like a soda shaking up, and you're just like, here we go. You know, it's going to be everywhere, buddy, on you and on all your family. You know what I'm saying? All right, you guys know what I'm talking about? Listen, guys, we've got to take a step back, though, and say, Lord, what do you, how do you want me to handle this situation? What do you want me to say? I'm glad in that situation. I almost said something back, and I just thought, you know what? That guy didn't realize what he said. He didn't mean it that way. And I just kept it in. Didn't say anything to anybody. And I'm glad I did. Because if not verbally, I would have been smacking this guy around. And he didn't even, he didn't even know what he said. Anthony's like, do it, do it. No, I'm not going to do it. Because right? <laughs> that's sensual, not spiritual. All right? Listen. But guys, he severely exaggerated his condition. You know what the Bible says? 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Guys, this is a great verse about temptation. If you struggle, which we all do with temptation, that is a great verse to memorize and work on. But one of the parts of it says this. It says, there has no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. And it says, but God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. You know what the devil tries to do? We feel like we're all by ourselves out there on an island. And like if this temptation is just hammering us right there and we feel like if we don't give in, we're going to die at that moment. Yeah. And Ethan, we forget about all our Christian brothers. We forget about everybody else that's in the battle just like us. And we just, no, 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 no. Wes may have some struggles, Tim, Ethan. All you guys may have some struggles. But dude, you don't understand how hard it is for me, guys. We all have struggles. We all have struggles. I'm not saying that it's easy for anybody. But can I tell you, you're not in this thing by yourself. And you're not out there on the battlefield alone by yourself and no one's around. Everybody's 100 miles away and you're like, Lord, there's no way I can battle off this temptation. Help me. Guys, that's not true. God will never leave you nor forsake you. He's right there with you. And you have other people that care about you and are praying for you. You got families, you got you got mentors, you got friends that care about you. They're praying for you. You're not by yourself. And you know, the Bible promises us, George, that God won't put too much on us that we can't handle. Mm -hmm. Guys, that's a blessing to me. You ever feel like you're right at your wit's end of resisting temptation? You're like, Lord, I got like this much more, and then I'm gonna fall. God, you gotta help me. Hey guys, you do need to go to God and say, God, I need your help. But you know what he says? He promises us that he won't put too much on us that we can't handle. That's a blessing. Hey, guys, Esau was hungry. I get it, bro. You're hungry. I get it. Little hangry. I get it. All right? Listen, but you know what? He was not at the point to die. Some of us exaggerate how bad it is for us. And you know what a lot of people do, guys? They exaggerate what's going on in their life. And then, Tim, they use that as an excuse to do something wrong, to do something stupid. Guys, I've preached a message about this before. But you know, most of the people that have walked away from God, you know, if you ask them what happened, they say, well, I had a lot going on in my life. I had a lot on my plate, and it was really hard. I was really struggling with some things. And I'm not demeaning those things. Maybe those things are valid. But can I ask you, 
Is any one of those reasons worth selling out God for? No. No, it's not. And by the way, if you have a lot on your plate right now, you know what you need to do? God, I need your help with this. School is hard. Some of these friendships I'm struggling with. God, some things in my family, it's not easy. God, help me. Guys, God's not up in heaven like, oh, that's it? You can't deal with that? What's wrong with this? Is this guy a wimp? Angels, is this guy a wimp? God wants to help you with anything that's going on in your life. He cares. You can cast all your care upon him. Why? Because he cares for you. He cares for you. Not just the preachers. Not just the full-time ministry workers. He cares for every single one of his children. Guys, if you got a lot on your plate, go to him. He cares. He wants to help you. But Esau's out here all by himself. Dude, if I don't get something in like the next two seconds here, I am going to literally die. No, you're not. No, you're not. And guys... Some of us, were, we're struggling against temptation. You're like, Man, I just can't anymore. God promised that he won't put too much on you that you can't handle. Mm-hmm. Guys, take solace in that. Take comfort in that. He se- severely exaggerated his condition. Then, after he says, behold, I'm at the point to die, he says, and what profit shall this birthright do to me? Guys, the significance was eliminated from his calling. He had that birthright on his life. That was a supreme honor. But you know what he's saying? Wes, this birth rate ain't putting anything on my plate right now. I'm hungry. feel like I'm going to die. You're not. But I feel like I'm going to die. What is this birth rate doing? It's not putting any spiritual food on my plate. I need some real food. Come on. Hey, guys, if you don't watch it, when you start going through struggles... Listen, you start going through struggle, you might have a calling on your life. You might have purity. You might have a potential and all these kind of things we've talked about. But guys, if you don't watch it, you can say, all those blessings are way out in the future. A lot of those things are when I'm an adult or when I have a a wife or when I have kids and, and all these kind of things and blah, blah, blah. But I need something right here when I'm 14, when I'm 15, when I'm 16. Hey, guys, don't sell out your future for a momentary pleasure of sin right now. You hear that? Don't sell out your entire future for a momentary pleasure pleasure of sin right now. Guys, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. Don't give it up. He thought it was the pointlessness of the spiritual. He said, man, I'm about to die. No, you're not. You're okay. You can hold on a little longer. And By the way, guys, the Bible doesn't tell us. I don't know what their home situation was, but I'm pretty sure there was some other kind of food in the house. Now, maybe it didn't smell as good as his soup. But I don't think the price was really worth it. Your birthright for a bowl of soup. Don't really think it's worth it. Right? He should have said, dude, why are you why are you coming after my birthright? No, your your soup smells really good, but it's not worth that to me. That's what he should have said. I'm sure there's some other kind of food that he could have gotten. But guys, he says, Man, this is so bad, guys. Don't get in a temptation in a situation you say, dude, this is just so bad. This I'm just desperate. I just got to make this drastic decision. No, take a step back in your mind. Say, God, I need your help right here. I'm thinking about making this bad decision, but God, I don't want to do it. Guys, he got desperate for food, for one meal. And he gave up something of immense value. He's saying, what good is this doing me right now? Hey, guys, you say, well, I need help right now. God knows that. But maybe he's testing you to see whether you're real or not. Maybe he's testing you to see whether you truly love him or not. Don't quit. Maybe he's trying to strengthen you and fortify you. Don't quit. I get it. Life is not always easy. It's not always a bed of roses. But when you have a need in the moment, go to God. Don't sacrifice your future for it. Well, I just need somebody, man. I need to get with somebody. Well, that's no excuse for you to make a dumb decision. Well, I just had a lot on my life and a lot on my plate right now. It's really hard for me. That's no excuse for you to make a dumb decision. And that's what Esau does. He exaggerates his condition. And at that moment, he looks at his birthright and said, it ain't doing me go- no good right now. It ain't filling my stomach. That's really, really short-sighted of him. That's really shallow of him. The Bible talks about that we need to press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Guys, whatever God has put on your life, that's a high calling. That's an honor. Listen, God has something for you to do in your life that nobody else can accomplish. You realize that? Every single person in the room. God has something for you to do in your life that no one else in the world can accomplish except you. 
That's a high calling. God put that on your life. That's the purpose why you're here on earth, why you're alive, why you're breathing. God put that in you. That's a high calling. But you know what the devil wants us to do? Look down on it. Hey, hey, I always hearken back to this, but let me hurry and say this. God gave Adam and Eve the whole Garden of Eden, right? You know what Eden means? Pleasure. The whole place was for their pleasure, their benefit. All types of, of food. I mean, Adam's naming the animals. I'm sure it's a beautiful place, wonderful place. What does Satan do, though? He wants us to look down on the good things that God has given to us. What did Satan point out in all of that garden, with all of its goodness, what is the one thing he pointed out to try to get Eve to think it wasn't so hot, wasn't so great? What did he do? Um, like uh, the tree of the non One tree, right? Mm-hmm. One tree! I mean, he says, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's nice here, and it's, it's beautiful and all, but, I mean, hey, you don't get to eat from that one tree? I mean, why would God not let you eat of that one tree? Isn't that kind of strange? Isn't that kind of weird? Mm-hmm. Hey, guys, you can be in the midst of luxury, but if your mind is jacked up, you won't appreciate it. Mm-hmm. You'll look at the blessings of God and think, well, yeah, some of them are okay, but that one thing, man, that really bothers me. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me, guys? All they had to do is stay away from one temptation. Wouldn't it be nice nowadays? Thank you. Wouldn't it be nice nowadays, even if we only had to stay away from one temptation? Dude, we got thousands, billions of them flying at us from everywhere. But they only had to stay away from one thing. But what did the devil do? Point out the one thing that they weren't supposed to touch and they, they weren't supposed to mess with. Hey, guys. If you focus on these things and you let these things come into your life, I'm telling you, it can mess you up. The devil's trying to speak to you and say, hey, maybe things aren't the way, as good as God uh, uh, tells you they are. You really going to believe him? Let's be careful. Let's be careful. Whatever God has put into your life, it's special. And he swallowed at an extreme cost. Guys, he gave up, as we said, his whole future for one meal. And then he sealed it with a, with a commitment. Verse number 33. Jacob said, swear to me this day. And he swore unto him and he sold his birthright unto him. That means it was a solemn oath. It was a commitment. It was a promise. I give it to you if you give me this food. That's what they did. The exchange was made. The deal was done. Man, unbelievable. Hey, guys, you say, what what in the world does this have to do with me? Guys, how do you view what God has put into your life? Do you value it? Listen, Esau was not just a dumb guy that didn't have it going on upstairs and he just, you know, just made this awful decision. You know what happened? He didn't value what God has put into his life. My question is, do you? Do you? If you have godly parents, do you value that? Listen, a lot of you get to grow up in a Christian home, Christian school. Listen, do you value that? Or is it just, man, there's so many rules. Are you kidding me? That's all you're focused on? You're not focused on that you get to learn about God? You're you're not focused on the fact that you don't get all this uh, 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 liberal... uh, agenda shoved down your throat and down your mind every day you're not focused on that you're not focused on that you're just focused on man there's so many rules if i don't wear my shirt like this or blah 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 can we get over that can we get past that can we just say god thank you for your goodness to me and if there are some rules and you're going to have rules anywhere you go some guys say i don't want any more rules i'm going to join the marines very smart very smart all right your your few few rules have turned into like thousands of rules all right they tell you when to wake up when to go to bed and Everything about your life. What to eat and how, how you should like it. All right? They give you everything. All right? Guys, in your life, have you started to fall for the devil's lies and say, you know, you have this desire in your life and God hasn't met it yet. I mean, what's going on with that? Mm-hmm. Hey, guys, maybe you need to be patient. Mm-hmm. Maybe God's trying to teach you something. Mm-hmm. Maybe God's saying, if I hold this back from him for a while, it'll make him into a better person. Hmm. We need to think about this stuff, guys. We need to think about it. So how did Esau sell out? He had these privileges. His priority was on the sensual. It was all about him. Guys, there's a, let me reference this weird verse. All right. There's a weird verse in the New Testament. I think it's Timothy. It talks about, you ever, I'll say this statement. You ever heard the statement in the Bible that says these, some people, they, their God is their belly. You ever read that? And you're like, Mm -hmm. huh? What is that? Is that like Buddha? You know, you're like, what, what is that? You know? Has anybody ever read that and you're not sure what that's talking about? Guys, it's saying their their God, what's most important to them in their life, is their own desires. Mm -hmm. 
Their hunger. Basically what Esau is doing here. It's the same thing. Guys, it's not talking about they wake up every day. Mm, oh, their God is their belly. That's not what it's talking about. But it's talking about their own desires. That's what's most important to them. They live by the flesh. Listen. And then in Esau's life, the pointlessness of the spiritual. He's saying, man, I'm hungry. I need something to feed me. This birthright ain't helping me right now. Hey, guys, he was sacrificing. He was, he was throwing away something that was so valuable to him. But he didn't care about it. Do you care about what God has put into your life? And the last thing, point number four is this. The pitiful treatment of the sacred. The pitiful treatment of the sacred. Verse number 34. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils. He did eat and drink and rose up and went his way. The last phrase is what we're honing in on. Thus Esau despised his birthright. Hey guys, he despised his birthright. He had a tremendous honor as we've been explaining to you. This birthright was, in, was a high privilege. It was special. It was blessed. It was a high honor. But guys, he treated it horribly. You know, when it says Esau despised his birthright, Guys, get this. It, it does not mean that he absolutely hated it. Usually when we use the word despise, that's what we mean. What it means is this. He didn't care about it. He didn't appreciate it. He treated it as insignificant, as nothing to him. Again, guys, he didn't value it. That's why he was so quick to give it up and to give it away. He treated, treated it horribly. And guys, he threw away the heavenly. Something that, guys... Throughout all the rest of biblical history, he would have been uh, commemorated and he would have been in that line of the Messiah. He would have been the spiritual leader. He would have been doing those sacrifices and all the different things that entail. He threw it away. He threw away the heavenly. Hey, guys, God has put some things into your life. God has given you some privileges in your life. Guys, what are you going to do with them? Hey, 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 team boy, what are you going to do with them? Are you going to sell them out? Listen, if the right, uh, I, I use that uh, in quotation, if the quote unquote right girl comes along, who's not the right girl, will you sell out? Hey, if the right group of friends, well, I want to impress them, I'll sell out. I'll say these words that I know I'm not supposed to say. I'll go these places that I know I shouldn't. I just want people to like me. Yeah, God knows that. And he has the right friends for you, but you got to be patient. He threw away the heavenly. Let me throw one last thing at you. You know, um, the, the inverse of this, the opposite of this, there's a guy named uh, Naboth. Naboth, weird name, but in first, you don't have to turn there. First Kings 21, Ahab the king, he wanted something precious of his, his vineyard. He says, sell it to me. He says, I'll give you a, 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 as good a one in exchange or I'll give you the money. It's up to you. You tell me. You know what Naboth answers to the king, a powerful man? He says, the Lord forbid me that I should give the inheritance of my fathers unto thee. You know what he's saying? What has been given to me, what has been passed down to me from my fathers, it's valuable to me. And I'm not giving it up. And I'm especially not giving it up to a wicked man like you, Ahab. Guys, that needs to be the same for us. I think it's the exact opposite reaction of Esau. Guys, he was so quick to give away something so valuable. And I've seen some teenagers do it. I've seen some young men do the same thing. All this girl smiling at me. Well, there goes my calling. Are you kidding me? There goes my potential. Oh, I want to do this. I want to do that for God. I want to do great things for God. Well, you're not going to do it when you're following these temptations so easily. When you're going after these things and throwing out what's valuable in your life. It's not going to happen, bro. It's not going to happen. Hey, guys, my encouragement to you today and it's something that we need to think about and strive for each and every day as we live. Don't sell out. Don't sell out. It's not worth it. Listen, when you face those moments where you're saying, man, I'm really struggling here. Go to God. Don't exaggerate and say, well, I just got to do something. Even if it's not the right decision, I got to make some decision. No, that's not smart. That's not wise. Slow down. Say, God, I need your help here. I, I want to say the right thing. I want to do the right thing. I want to go the right path here. God, help me because I don't know what to do. And God, if I go by my feelings, it's going to take me off a path that I don't want to end up. Hey, guys, what are you going to do? Are you going to focus on, I'm just going to take care of me, brother Tom, money. And, and I want all the blessings in my life. And I want God to provide all these things for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or are you going to put what God wants first and let him take care of it? Guys, isn't that what he says? Matthew six thirty three. 
Last verse I'll use. He says, seek ye first, not last, not when you feel like it. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. You know what the all things are talking about? God providing what you need. God knows that we have needs. God knows we need certain financial and material things. But God will take care of those if we put him first. You know what he should have done when this offer was given to him saying, Nah, uh, your chili is a little too expensive for me, Jacob. I'll go somewhere else. Because this birthright is valuable to me. Hey guys, but what do you value? The things of God or the things of this world? Can I challenge you one more time? Don't sell out. Let's bow our head and close our eyes.